to intermediate level English language arts. Hi, and welcome to English language arts grade 5. Our topic for today would be the two very basic common forms of nouns, namely the S form and the possessive form. Both forms are very common and very important in the English language, especially as you form nouns. Now take note, kids, this is a review. This means that you guys are already assumed, or it's already assumed, that you guys already know about these. Now, let's go discuss the objectives for this video first. The first one is to be able to review the two basic forms of nouns, the S form and the possessive form. And the next one is to be able to differentiate both of them because a lot of people tend to mix these two up. They tend to interchange the both of them. Our goal is that you guys are able to differentiate both of them. Now, let us discuss the very first one, forming the plurals of nouns. Okay, now, for the plurals of nouns, right, you have what you call a general rule. Now, this is not something that you would hear from other teachers. This is something that I have made up. This is a term that I used, servants, right? Now, this term, basically, for me, it means that this is the rule that if you apply this rule, in whatever situation, people will most likely understand you because that's the goal of the English language, right? That's the goal of you trying to study about it. You want people to understand you. Therefore, if you meet a new word or you're, you, you meet a word that you are not familiar with, right? apply the general rule, people will most likely understand you. What is the general rule in making a noun plural? You have to either just add S or ES. But of course, you don't do that to all nouns, no. You have specific rules for specific things. Take, for example, in number one, for most nouns, you just add S. Flea becomes fleas, river becomes rivers. But if they end in S, 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 C, H, S, H, X, or Z, like in number two, you add an ES. Bus becomes buses, box becomes boxes, dish becomes dishes, buzz becomes buzzes. Right? Now for three and four, these are words that end in Y. In three, if before the Y there is a consonant, change Y to I first and then add ES. Like for example, candy becomes candies. And lady becomes ladies. Eight. Number four, if before the Y is a vowel, A, E, I, O, U, right? You add only an S. Like for example, joy and key. You just add S for them. Right? Next, number five, six, seven, and eight. These are um, different situations wherein if the noun ends in O, now, if, there, if it ends in O, and before the O is a vowel, then just add S, like zoos and boos, right? But if, for example, certain words that end in O, you either add an S or an ES, both are accepted. Both are acceptable. Take, for example, mango, right? Mangoes can be either M-A-N-G-O-S or M-A-N-G-O-E-S. Same is true with the word volcanoes. Next, number seven. Sometimes, if they end in O, you only have to add ES. Only. There's no other way. Take, for example, tomato and heroes and potatoes. They have to be ES. You don't just add an S to a tomato to make it plural. You don't say tomatoes. Or, for example, potato, just add S. It's potatoes. No. You add ES to make it plural. And for A, some of the words... You just have to add an S. Photo, photos, radio, radios, piano, pianos, ratio, ratios. Yes. Now comes the question, Sir Vince, how will we know if you just add S? How do we know if you just add ES? Or how do we know if we both can be applied? Well, class, I cannot give you the full list of it. Because A, like, if I were to do that, it would take so much time. And if I were to explain all of the mechanics as to when you add S or when you add ES, right? then it would take a long time. Right? Okay? So we do not have that much time for me to discuss all of that. Another reason is because I don't really know all of them. To be honest, I don't know all of them. Sometimes I tend to still have to look them up. 
which comes which goes back to the question what do you do how do we know one advice i can always give you and you would re you would hear me reminding you guys this again and again and again okay if you really want to know then you better consume or immerse yourselves in the english language read books in the english language watch series watch movies okay you can even play games so long as you consume different things different media it, that uses the english language you are most likely gonna expand your vocabulary all right number nine and number ten are nouns that end in f for number nine most of the nouns that end in f or ff or even fd you just add s belief beliefs puff puffs safe safes but for example if they end in f or f e right you have to change the f to v first Take, for example, if it just ends in F, change the F to V, and then add ES. But if it ends in FE, change the F to V, and then add S, and only just S. Therefore, you have shelf becomes shelves, knife becomes knives. Again, for things, how do we know? Like I said previously, the only way, the best way to know is that you guys have to really immerse yourself in the English language. Now, this is not all. You also have certain nouns that are irregular. That means these are the nouns that do not follow the general rule. If you like to make it plural, you do not follow the general rule. What do you do? In number one, right, you sometimes don't change it. Like deer. Deer, the plural of deer is just deer. The plural of sheep is just sheep. Right? Yes? For two, right, they have two forms. When you say elk, the plural of elk is elk or elks. The plural of index is indices or indexes. Yes? These are different um, irregular nouns. Usually these are nouns that are from a different uh, language. Foreign nouns or foreign words. Yes? Three. Some irregular nouns, right? They only have plural forms. There's no singular form of it. Like for example, savings or clothes or pants or shears or scissors or trousers. There's no singular form. All of them is always just plural. Next, five. Some irregular nouns undergo internal vowel changes. Like for example, two inside the two O's turn into two E's. Prices, the I, the last I becomes an E. Woman, the A becomes an E. And sometimes you really have to make big changes. Like for example, radius in number six becomes radii. Datum becomes data. Cactus becomes cacti. Now for seven, sometimes you just add an E to make it plural. For example, alumna, alumni. Antenna, Anthony. Larva, larvae. And number eight. Number eight, sometimes, right, they have different plural forms. They have really different. Like for example, you have an ox. To make it plural, you'd say oxen. Child becomes children. Brother becomes brethren or brothers. These are your different rules of making a noun into S form. Take note of the very specific rules, but again, if you meet or encounter a new word, just apply the general rule and you're good. Yes? Next, we go to the next topic, which is possessive form of nouns. This is the other form. Now, what do you do in the other form? Now, the possessive form, basically, to first give you an idea, is that this is the form that you use or do to the noun to make it show ownership. It owns something. The general rule, guys, is that if it ends in S, add only an apostrophe. But if it does not end in S, give it an apostrophe and then S. Take, for example, Becky. Becky ends in Y. It's not an S. Say an apostrophe S. Becky's teacher. Max's restaurant. How about here? Girls says ribbons. Girls ends in S already. Therefore, you add just an apostrophe. Now, there are certain noteworthy rules, right? These are rules that I want you guys to take note of. Like in number one, some plural proper nouns, it's like, for example, a lot of people, a lot of people with the last name Santos, these are all Santoses. Those are a lot of people who are um, Gonzales are Gonzaleses, right? You only have to add an apostrophe. So Santoses mansion. Gonzalez says this. 
building. Right? Now, in the next one, right, this is special because sometimes you would like to make a certain word plural, a certain letter plural, or a certain term plural, like for, or the, or the number seven. A lot of number sevens, a lot of letter T's. Right? What do you do there? You add an apostrophe and then S. This is the only case that you do this. In anything else, if you'd like to make it plural, no apostrophes. And then the last one, right? You, you don't just use the apostrophe and then S. You also actually can use the of phrase. Now, unlike the one with the apostrophe and then S, the possessive form, right? in the possessive form, you start with the owner and the, the thing it owns. Like, for example, in the first example over there, a while ago you say Max's restaurant. But here, in the other one, if it's an of phrase, you start with the thing it owns first. It owns a restaurant, and then you have the phrase, the preposition of, right? and then the owner, Max. No need for apostrophe or S. Yes? Okay? And with that, these are your two very primary, very basic, very common forms of nouns. Again, do not interchange these, yes? If you like to make it plural, just add S or ES. If you like to show possession, add an apostrophe and then S. Alright? So that basically ends the, the full topic for this video. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!